Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k Space Marines. Yep, we're back again. We've got another review video for you today. And this time we're going to be looking at one of the new units, one of the units that are from the 10th edition, and that is the Desolation Squad. So of course they've had a bit of a nerf recently, we're going to get into that as well, along with all the, the data sheet review and the Planet 40k rating at the end of that video. So, the rear side of the data card, we've got a 200 point unit for, we only get 5 of them now. It's basically 40 points each. Previously you could get 10 of them in the unit, it is now literally just 5 because of the balanced data slate updates. So 5 for 200 points, 40 points a model if you like. Every model is equipped with a bolt pistol, the Castellan launcher, and then the super frag launcher as well as a close combat weapon. So there's a lot of different launchers going off here, quite a lot of weaponry. Now all models in the unit can have their super frag rocket, rocket launcher replaced with a super crack rocket launcher and the sergeant in the unit can replace the big launcher with the Benjamin launcher. As for keywords, infantry, grenades, and that's kind of it really. I mean the grenade keyword is going to relate to a stratagem. So if they're not within the, so if they're not within engagement range and they're within eight inches of the enemy unit, then they're not shot yet. They can roll 66 and only be four plus you throw out a mortal wound. That's the grenade stratagem from the core rules for one command point. So let's flip the card over to the front side and let's look at the stats to begin. Six inches of movement, top is four, three plus armor, two wounds, leadership six plus, and the OC is one. Everything is pretty much standard. I mean, this is Space Marines, this, the statistics don't change that often, especially with these kind of infantry units. So let's move down into the ranged weaponry. So the ranged weaponry to begin, we've got, well, I'm not going to go through the bolt pistol and the close combat weapon because it's kind of... I mean, it is what it is. I mean, in melee, they do have three attacks, just worth noting that. We really want to talk about the launchers here. So the Catalan launcher, which has blast and indirect fire. So they can fire from behind obscuring terrain. They don't actually need line of sight, although it normally is a minus one to hit when you're doing so. We'll get onto that a little bit more in a moment. It's a 36 inch range weapon, which is nice. D3 attacks per model. Blitzer skill 3 plus, strength 4, no AP, 1 damage. So it's a little bit like a D3 bolt gun if you like but you can be firing it from quite far and with blast and behind the behind ruins as well so a pretty nice weapon i mean if you've got a unit of five which you will five d3 shots all with blast per per model as well everyone seems to forget that it's per model the blast attack so if you were firing at a five man unit for example the entire unit that we've got is going to have effectively five more shots because each single model in our unit gains an extra shot for every five models. So the whole unit that we have basically gets five additional shots. So on average a five man team in total is 15 shots on average. Pretty good, pretty good. Now the second weapon which is the, the other stock weapon is the Super Frag Rocket Launcher which also has blast and is heavy so therefore if you stay stationary it's a plus one to the hit roll. 48 inches of range, D6 plus 1 attacks, Blister skill 4 plus, strength 5, no AP, 1 damage. So you're hitting slightly worse with that one as far as the ballistic skill goes. D6 plus 1 attacks, pretty nice. There's still no AP here, but it, you know, now you can actually start to affect toughness, toughness 4 as well as maybe even toughness 5. And blast as well, and heavy. So it could be going up to a 3 plus with a ballistic skill. Again, the entire unit, every single model has blast, so again if you're going up against a 5 man unit that's going to be an additional 5. Imagine going up against my Necro Warriors and there's 20 of them there, so every single model that we've got will actually be 4 extra shots. When you've got a 5 man team, that's 20 extra shots just from the extra blast attacks which is kind of mad. But firing against a standard 5 man unit, on average you're looking at about 27.5 shots, obviously we don't do fives, but point fives with, with dice. But as an average goes, that is the average. Of course, you're going to be adding this on top of your Castellan launcher shots. So this is really good as a pairing versus light infantry as well as even medium infantry. Now, the third rocket within this list is the Super Crack rocket launcher, which you can swap out the Super Frag launcher for. This one doesn't have blast, but it is a heavy weapon. 48 inches again, only one shot per model this time. Let's go 4 plus. Strength 10, minus 2 AP, and the damage is D6 plus 1. So quite a nice quite a nice bit of damage there. And, and the strength is not bad too. And you've got five of these in the unit, potentially. Yes, you only get one shot. But, I mean, 
that's not bad when you've got five of them. Heavy means you could be hitting on a three plus, but I mean, look at that strength and look at that damage. This could be a real decent anti-tank unit. But yeah, all the options so far are pretty good, pretty menacing. Now the fourth option, which is just for the sergeant alone, which is the Vengur 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 launcher. It's got blast and indirect fire, so very similar to the Castellan launcher there. 48 inches of range, D6 attacks, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 7, minus 1 AP and 2 damage. So it's a bit of a middle of the road kind of weapon here. Maybe to be used against fellow space marines because it's damage 2. You're likely wounded on 3s because of the strength 7, is high enough. Minus 1 AP is okay. If I was taking the anti-infantry loadout with the entire unit, I would definitely swap the sergeant out for the Benjur launcher. May as well. But if I was to be going with the anti-tank weaponry, then yeah, I wouldn't bother swapping it out. Go all five of them with a super crack, you may as well. Now the ability side of the deck card, we've got Oath of Moment. If you select that unit, well, army-wide you've got this, haven't you? Select an enemy unit, re-roll and hit rolls and wound rolls for that entire battle round. Pretty good for a Desolation Squad, to be honest with you. You probably would work around that ability with this with this unit. Because there's a lot of attacks. You could be doing a lot of damage there. Whether it's, you know, again, infantry units, whether it's the vehicle units, if you've got those kind of weapons. Depends on what you selected, I suppose. Now, the actual unique ability is targeted optics. So each time you, this unit remains stationary until the end of the next movement phase, or until the start of your next movement phase, ranged weapons equipped with the models have the Ignores Cover ability. And they also ignore the penalty to the hit rolls when making attacks of indirect weapons as well. So for targets that are not visible. So normally it's a minus one to hit when you're shooting indirectly. And also removing cover is pretty good because there's cover all over the place at the moment. Cover is so easy to get. If a unit isn't getting cover nowadays, they're probably doing it really wrong. It's so simple to get cover. So yeah, that's a pretty decent ability really. You're, you're taking away cover and you're also adding to your hit roll, I suppose, with the indirect weaponry. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Let's move into some of the synergy of this data card. We've got the grenade stratagem that we kind of mentioned in the intro, when we are talking about the keywords, in fact. So we've already spoken about that. Fire Overwatch is another one from the core rules that I would probably like to use on this unit because of the sheer amount of attacks, especially against the larger units. Imagine a 20 Termagant unit coming up. Bang. How many attacks is that? There's a lot of attacks there. Definitely worth it if you. It's just one command point as well, isn't it? As for the Space Marine side of the strategies from the Gladius, Gladius Task Force, you've got Storm of Fire. So this is to ignore cover. And now, of course, you do ignore cover if you stay stationary, but if you haven't stayed stationary in this particular movement phase, then you could use Storm of Fire. On top of that, you're going to add AP to your weaponry if you're in the Devastator Doctrine. Now, bearing in mind that a lot of those weapons didn't have any, out, any AP at all. Castellan launcher and the super frag rocket launcher didn't have any AP, so adding extra AP could really help. You've then got some unit synergy that I want to talk about. The land speeder is the first one. Now, I don't really normally use the land speeder to be honest with you, but the target, target sighted ability so at the start of your shooting phase, you select an enemy unit that's visible until the end of the phase. Each time a friendly unit makes a weapon with a blast weapon that targets that enemy unit, it's a plus one to the hit roll, and the target ignores cover. So, again, you get that when you remain stationary, the ignores cover part, but if you moved, you get it from here. But also a plus one to the hit roll, which kind of negates the heavy weapons in particular, which is the super frag launcher, the super crack launcher. So whatever launcher you've taken, really, they've got heavy, but if you move, of course, you lose heavy. So it's it kind of counteracts movement, so you can still move and get all the bonuses. You then got the Incursor Squad with the multi-spectrum array ability. So in the shooting phase after this unit has shot, selects one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of the attacks made by that unit, and effectively they give a plus one to the hit roll army wide. Again, it's just another way of giving them a plus one if they've moved, so they've basically cancelled out their heavy. You've got Dreadnoughts with Wisdom of the Ancients Aura for units within six inches that are infantry. They get to reroll hit rolls over one. Nice, especially if you've already got the plus ones with the heavies and stuff. Then you've got a load of characters. I want to talk about the three in particular that will relate to the Desolation Squad. The Apothecary, the Narthesium ability to be able to bring one of the destroyed model back. You've got the Astardi's Banner from your Ancient to gain an extra a an extra OC, so you'll be OC2. And the Librarian, well, the Psychic Library, the, what they call the Primaris Librarians, 
They've got two abilities that will relate. The Psychic Hood for the 4 plus for no pain against Psychic Attacks. That is situational against certain factions, Grey Knights, Thousand Suns, that kind of thing. But they've also got the Mental Fortress ability, which is a 4 plus invulnerable save for the entire unit. Now you might not necessarily need that because they probably will be behind ruins and stuff doing indirect fire, but if they weren't, you've got a 4 plus invulnerable save option that way. Other bits of synergy, you've got the Bolter Discipline Enhancement for one of the characters. So when he's leading a unit, whatever character you've got, they can give the entire unit sustain hits one. Which is madness, really, if you consider how many shots they've got. Again, 22 in the Termagants with all the blast and then sustain hits one as well. That's nasty. And if you're in the Devastating Doctrine, it's a 5 plus for the critical hits. So if any 5 plus is a sustain hits one, not just 6 pluses. That gets really nasty. And one more defense strategy that I want to talk about is Armor Contempt for one command point. In your opponent's shoot phase or any of the fight phases, you effectively worsen the AP by one. Just a little extra there for us. So that's all the synergy that I'm going to talk about today. There's probably plenty more. Of course, this is Space Marines. You've got loads of synergy everywhere. But these are the ones that I wanted to highlight today. As for the battlefield role as well as the secondary mission objectives, let's talk about that now. So what are they doing in terms of a battlefield role? In my opinion, they're sitting on your objective, probably your home objective. They don't need to be going too far and they're firing from afar and in mass. If you can get them perfectly behind a ruin, behind obscuring terrain, on an objective, home objective, you're scoring your points, you're still firing, you can't be targeting back, targeted back. The likelihood is your opponent isn't gonna be charging unless they've found a way to deep strike in and get the nine inch charge if there's a gap and you've not screened right. But really they should be fairly safe, fairly comfortable shooting from afar. Now as for the secondary missions from the Leviathan deck that they could be scoring, there's not many to be honest with you, you've got Defend Stronghold, which is your own Stronghold, your own DZ. Extend Battle Lines, they could be taking part in one of those. You need to have one in your area and one in the No Man's Land, so of course they can do those. No Prisoners to be removing units as well, I think they can do that quite comfortably. Quite comfortably. As for pros and cons, they've got a crazy amount of fire attacks, fire power from the pros. Ignoring cover while stationary is always nice. They've got access to indirect fire, also very nice. They've got the choice of rockets pre-game, beautiful, so if you are short in anti-tank you can switch the, the loadout, put them with the frag, frag uh, not frag, put them with the crack missiles, with the crack rockets, and they've got plenty of index synergy, we only touched upon some of it. As for the cons, they're not fantastic in melee, they get caught in melee, they're in a bit of bother, yes they've got three attacks each, but realistically they're going to get chewed up. Only fireman units since the nerf, and they're quite a costly unit now. So that's the pros, that's the cons. As for the Planet 40k rating today, where do I put these guys? Now, obviously these were a five star unit before the nerf. I'm kind of struggling to mark them, if I'm honest with you. Are they still a five star unit? They, they have to go down because the nerf has pushed them down. But how far down have they gone? I don't think they've gone down that far. So for now, I'm going to be going with the Planet 40k rating of 4.5 out of 5, purely because of the nerf. They're still, very, they're still very good and they're doing a lot of work. So guys, in the comments down below, make sure you're giving me your 5-star rating for this unit. And also remember to subscribe when you're exits and like the video if you want to see more of this kind of content. Of course, the codex will be dropping at some point, so we'll be covering that. But yeah, thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.